Hello and welcome back to Mark's House and Garden UK. I'm just using my homemade molehill harvesting system to gather up this wonderful topsoil that the moles in my garden have given me for free. And the reason I'm putting it in these pots is because I'm about to plant out my tulips. A little bit late to the party, these are the tulips which I took up from last year and they've been in a cool dry place and you're probably supposed to plant your tulips in late autumn November time. These have been left in the garage and they're already what is known as in the green which basically means they've started to grow. It's not too late, those will do okay. I have no idea what colour they are, they're a mixture of colours and they're going in these pots. The reason I'm putting the soil directly into the pots is because when they're full I'll know I've got enough. But let's get back to the subject in hand, moles. Do you love them or do you hate them? Now if you were precious about your lawn you probably wouldn't welcome a family of moles. I think I've got four or five individual moles on my lawn. Similarly if you were a farmer and you were using expensive farm machinery on the film on the fields uh, you probably wouldn't welcome them there either because these molehills can damage farm machinery. Personally I love the idea that the moles are here living in my garden. But have you ever wondered what goes on beneath there? In this video I'm going to share with you 10 fascinating facts about moles and I'll also signpost a fact sheet. I'll put the link to this in the description box below this video. So what do I know about moles which makes them so interesting and if you hate them or dislike them by the end of this video you might find a place within your heart to start liking them because they really are fascinating creatures. Now the garage conversion, which I've told you about quite a lot recently, is still ongoing but I just fancied getting out into the fresh air and this is one of the jobs I can do today in a short period of time. So I'm going to gather up this soil, tell you about moles and then in another video in a moment I'm going to show you how to plant tulips. So getting back to moles, subterranean animals that live broadly everywhere in the UK. They will live anywhere where the soil is deep enough to burrow and they do burrow quite deep and they make their presence known by putting up these mole hills and of course that mole hill is the spoil from the hole, the tunnel that they've dug beneath the ground. They're quite a small animal that looks like a mouse. They're about 110 to 150 millimetres long. They've got very short silky black fur little pink fleshy nose for sniffing out the prey which tends to be worms or insect larva and tiny little eyes. The eyes are underdeveloped because they don't really need eyes because they live underground. On a rare occasion you'll see a mole above the ground and that might be when it's in its molehill looking for worms or when the babies are leaving the nest and dispersing and they do that over ground and that's a, a time at which they are in great danger. I'll tell you about the reproductive cycle of the mole in a moment. And of course the mole has a very unusual looking feet. Its front foot feet or paws and whatever you want to call them are like big spades and they point in a backward direction and that's obvious why that's been evolved that way so that they can dig through the ground, underneath the ground. And they dig through these tunnels and there can be a hundred meters of tunnels underneath the ground. They do go down quite deep and in drought times when there's very little water about they'll go even deeper because that's where the, the earth remains damp and that makes it easier for them to dig out the prey. Now in some quarters moles are considered pests and they have been hunted and killed in a bid to kind of try and exterminate them on the land. They've also been hunted for their pelts, moleskin, you've probably heard of that. Clothes have been made from moleskin in the past. Now in a bid to exterminate the moles 
farmers have used strychnine as a poison. But of course that's banned nowadays. Now, of course the strychnine in the mould could quite easily get into the food chain and kill other animals like birds of prey. Moles are often prey to owls, barn owls, kestrels and buzzards. Cats will also take a mole if it finds one and some do get run over on the road. It's a solitary animal. It lives on its own until it comes to breeding time when the male, which is slightly larger than the female, will venture out of its own territory and look for a mate. Now what fascinates me is I've often wondered how they breed and why don't you ever see a baby mole? Well, they go quite deep and they make a little spherical chamber which they fill with organic, dry organic material like grass and straw. And the male will find the female and obviously mate with it. And then shortly thereafter, the female will have or give birth to four little baby moles, which will be completely naked. And then after about two or three weeks, they will grow fur. And after five or six weeks, they'll be weaned. They'll no longer, no longer need the mother's milk anymore. And they will go off to find their own territory. And that's when they come over ground and go off across the fields. And you, you might see them in the open air. And that's when they're at quite a lot of danger. So that's how they breed. And uh, they, they also can have these little spherical chambers underneath the ground where they will store a supply of worms. Now worms are one of the big prey, um, food um, sources for moles. And they will store them. There's obviously going to be an abundance of worms, so what, what do they do when they fall upon hard times? They, they have a little store of worms, and the interesting thing about them is they will bite the head section of the worm, which will disable it and immobilise it. So they'll have this little bunch of worms to go back to in a little kind of um, um, larder, is the word I'm looking for. And a larder has been dug up. And an account of 470 worms was found in one mole larder. So that mole was never going to go hungry. Now, if you look here, I've got a little collection of molehills. One, two, three, four, five there in a little circle. And then if I wander over here towards my wildlife pond, there's another little collection of moles. Now, I don't know if this is all one mole or if that's one over there and this is one over here. And there's another mole selection of molehills over there to the right and there's one down here. Now I've been in the garden on occasion and, and acted quite and have been acting quite quietly not doing very much and I've seen soil emerging at the top of the molehill and if you look at this these two molehills here you can see this this soil here is is reasonably fresh and that is obviously slightly older. So this is obviously an active molehill and there's several in this area which have got fresh uh, soil at the top of them. Now I did mention earlier that moles have been trapped in the past and it begs the question how do you trap a mole? Well in my garage when I moved into this place I found this and I've since learned that this is a mole trap. It's not particularly humane. It's placed in the run and then this trigger is put in the opening and when the mole goes through that little ring there it releases the trigger and the mole is trapped. It's pretty barbaric actually. That will be remaining in my garage as a, a piece of interest but it will never be used again. And of course, one of the many benefits of moles is they do provide you with this lovely, fine topsoil. And I've nearly got enough for my tulips here now. And I've got several more mole hills to go at. At my local hardware store, they sell topsoil in bags, about five pound a bag. So this particular mole is definitely earning its keep. And there are other benefits to moles. They do help with drainage in the soil and they do help to aerate the soil and also there are some garden pests, the larvae of which live in the soil. And I'm thinking of things like carrot fly and the mole eat the larvae so it's a good way of controlling pests in a sense. And just look at this lovely healthy 
topsoil. Soil is a living organism in its own right. There were lots of microbes and microorganisms and bacteria in there that make that really healthy soil. I can't wait to get my tulips planted into this. And of course, any residue which I don't gather up can quite easily be raked out and that will be a fine top dress for the lawn as it starts to grow again in the spring. Don't worry about this soil, it'll disappear. Just look at this beauty over here. This is a wonderful molehill. Beautiful, rich, dark soil, untouched by human hand. Perfect for my tulips. A little bit concerned about this one right on the edge of the wildlife pond. I hope the mole doesn't burrow underneath there and try to emerge and make a molehill. Because if he does, I'll end up with an empty pond. So as you can see, in no time at all, I've got easily enough good topsoil there ready to receive my tulips in the green and that will be the next video I'll be doing in a few moments. Hope you've enjoyed those fascinating facts about moles, a wonderful secretive subterranean mammal. If you have please do subscribe and hit the notifications bell and don't forget to have a look at my garage conversion playlist. I'll see you soon for some more house and garden adventures. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.